So I don't feel that strongly about it, but there was another interesting result from the weekend. I want to get your take on Tony. And it's, it was Laurel river in the, in the Dubai world cup winning by a record eight and a half lengths. Like that's, that's pretty impressive because there's been, there's been some blowout wins in the Dubai world cup. So he set the record for biggest win margin. And he was an interesting horse because he was a Judmont homebred who was with Bob Baffer for the first couple of seasons of his career. Really couldn't keep it together. Had seven starts in his first three seasons with Bob Baffert. It was last seen with Baffert in August of 2022, winning the Pat O'Brien stakes by three and three quarter lengths with a 108 buyer. Obviously something went amiss after that. He resurfaces this year, almost about a year and a half later, almost um, in the barn of, uh, what was the guy's name? Bupat Seymour, who I've never. Yeah, who I've never heard of. Obviously, I don't follow Dubai racing all that closely, but he doesn't he doesn't strike me as a huge name, um, even in, in that corner of the world. I'm always just curious about the stories of horses like this, like how they end up going halfway across the world to a totally different trainer and then popping up and winning a big race like two years after he really burst onto the scene. He's now a six year old. We'll see what he does the rest of the year. But Tony, what was like, what was your impression of that? The horse that used to be a Bob Baffert horse disappears for a month, a year and a half, pops up, wins the Dubai World Cup for local connections. It was a wild story. Yes, it was. And look, visually, it was extraordinarily impressive. Uh, yeah, you know, the rails seemed to be very good and so on and so forth. But still, you know, he just he just skipped away from them uh, in a in a remarkable performance. Now, as you point out, he showed high class ability in the U.S. when he's when he was with Baffert. Uh, his trainer in Dubai, I think, is actually fairly well known. Is he? Son, okay. of a, son of a trainer who had a lot of success uh, in that part of the world, and uh, he's he's uh, building a building a, a reputation for himself even before this horse, I think. Um, but in any case. Uh, I, I, I thought that there were two particularly interesting aspects of the Laurel River story. One of them, to go back to the point in 2022 at which he was in Baffert's barn, is that, yes, his last race was in the Pat O'Brien in August in California, but he was actually being pointed for the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile at Keeneland that year, and he was scratched the morning before that race by the regulatory veterinarians. Baffert's response from a Daily Racing Forum article was, quote, he looked healthy to us and he was moving well. They said they didn't like something about him. They scratched him and there's no arguing with them. Now, as I mentioned, in a in a brief post about this, it is not uncommon for trainers who do not willingly scratch one of their horses before a big race to take issue with the regulatory vets who force a scratch. And I would go so far as to say that at times they have good reason to complain. You know, just to use one example. If it's an older horse, and all older horses are arthritic to some extent, they may not move very well in their slower paces. And there may be a situation where the vets are being ultra conservative, not happy with the way a horse jogs, when in fact that's how the horse has been jogging before its races for you know two years or whatever. I'm just using a, uh, a hypothetical example. So mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not reflexively opposed to trainers reacting adversely to a horse being scratched in a forced manner like that. But let's put this into perspective with Laurel River. The horse did not race for 16 months after that scratch. He didn't breeze for months after that scratch. Yep. Is there any possibility that there was nothing going on there? No, obviously there was a problem. Obviously, there were only two possibilities with Baffert's uh, reaction. One would be that he understood that there was an issue, but was going to run the horse anyway. 
and was embarrassed that the vets forced the scratch. And so he implied that the horse was fine just to save face. The only other possibility that I can think of is that he failed to see the problem and never admitted fault, even after it became clear that there had been a problem. Either way, I frankly consider that to be damning. Uh, the only other note that I'll make on Laurel River is that there was a, a bit of a surprising to me uh, post or, or, or article that was, that was written a couple of days ago suggesting that he won't race again in 2024. You know, it's just really it's April. Anyway, wow. Now I understand that in that part of the world, due to the heat, there are truncated racing seasons. But it still seems a bit odd <laughs> that a horse that his trainer reported came out of the race, quote, bouncing. I mean, they're not going to bother to try. You know, Judmont races everywhere. Right. There are dirt races in, everywhere. There are dirt races right. in Japan. There are dirt races. You know, they're, I mean, you know, it's, it's a strange. And he's a, proven, he's a proven commodity here. He's run yeah, on the right, dirt right. here. He's, yeah. run, he's run well. Right. So that that I, I don't have any strong opinion about the meaning of the of the apparent decision, but it does strike me as being odd, and I expect that I'm not alone. And and Joe, just so you know, I had to just look this up. Um, uh, Seymour, the trainer, actually did run a horse in the Kentucky Derby in 2022. Summer is tomorrow uh, at 40 to one. The horse was in front at the first call, the second call, and uh, lost by 64 lengths, but beat the ambulance by two lengths. It beat the ambulance. Okay. So, so anyway, that, that, that was, that was Seymour's at least record here in the States. Okay. Well, well, that's another interesting part of, of, of the Saturday card was that, you know, there really haven't been any horses that have come from overseas and really made a dent in the Derby in recent years, whether it's Japan, whether it's UAE, whether it's, whether it's Europe or, you know, uh, Great Britain or France or, or one of those turfy countries, like now you got a horse and forever young who on paper looks like a, a contender. And I guess we did have some con like contenders on paper last year uh, with Derma Sotogake or Ushba Tesoro, whichever one of those horses came and ran. I think it was Derma Sotogake who came and ran the Derby. So Ushba Tesoro is an older horse, but forever young is five for five. Um, he's by real steel. Who's a deep impact sire. Like those that line conceiving conceivably could win classic dirt races. And he's two for two in in the UAE this year, or rather, he won the Saudi Derby and the UAE Derby. Two for two in the Middle East. I don't know. Like it's tough to project. I think those horses, because there's been such little success from the shippers, from the the cross Atlantic shippers um, into the Derby. Like I don't know either of you guys really. Like do you do you think this might be the year? And Japan has trended in this direction to you know starting to compete in some of our big races. Right. Do you think this is a year they have a we have a real contender from overseas? Well, and Joe, don't forget, they also have T.O. Password, who also has earned enough points um, and said that they are coming to the States to run in the Derby. So we're not going to have one, but possibly two Japanese horses, um, you know, in here. And I know that it was it was, you know, definitely the 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 the, the marketing plan um, for the Kentucky Derby and for the Triple Crown to not only engage you know, international horses for the Kentucky Derby, um, but to also grant them points um, and to grant them actually a win in your in um, as well as, a, you know, the, the, the hundred pointer um, that they have there. So they also are trying to make and market this as the world's race, just like the Breeders' Cup has done, uh, you know, trying to make it internationally. Um, think I'm going to let you take over in, in a second, but it looks like Japan is starting to make real inroads. Um, they've won a couple of they, they've they've hit the board in a couple of Breeders' Cup. Uh, they they won a Breeders' Cup last year, and uh, and it and it looks like that you know through buying a lot of our top fillies um, off the racetrack that they are building a tremendous program there. Yes, uh, I agree with you, John, and I I'm happy to see Japan uh, meet with the uh, more and more success in the international game. I was. I was sort of a naysayer or a skeptic uh, a number of years ago. I remember uh, arguing with, with someone online who's pretty well known in England um, and as a, as a journalist uh, about the quality of the, of the Japanese horses that had been running on the interna international stage. But I'm no longer, you know, taking that 
that cynical position. Uh, they, they obviously are breeding and developing a lot of good horses, and it's it's great to see. It's a, it's a you know the, it's it's a wonderful industry in Japan. Um, if they haven't done it already, they should have some sort of uh, 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 Group One uh, race uh, named the Arthur Hancock because he's, he certainly played a, a pivotal role. In uh, I'm not blaming him; he did what he what he had to do at the time. Um, but and, and no one could have predicted that Sunday Silence would be the uh, you know Asia's version of Northern Dancer, which is essentially what is what has transpired. Um, but uh, no, the ja the Japanese have done a, a terrific job as far as the the chances that 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 undefeated horse has in the Derby. I, he certainly has a chance. I've I've. You know, I'm sort of waiting for him to show uh, what I would call a real acceleration. He strikes me as something of a grinder, and that's my my biggest criticism of him. But I did read recently, and I wasn't aware of this prior to the race in Dubai, that in fact uh, he had not shipped well to Saudi prior to that race. I didn't know that, and that makes that you know that his, he was sort of all out to win the race in Saudi, not terribly impressive, but that you know that puts an asterisk on that race and and you know uh, makes him more impressive uh, when you consider that that he then shipped on to Dubai and in fact ran an even better race. But mm -hmm. but again, my biggest criticism, if I right now, if I were you know making a book. I would say he would be a bigger threat in the Belmont than the Derby because it's hard right. to win the Derby, you know, without a without a, you know, a good turn of foot. And maybe the source has one, and I just haven't seen it yet. But I did watch some of his Japanese races as well, and he he strikes me as you know more of a galloping type of horse that that picks it up slowly and and is you know maybe relentless and obviously a very high class horse. But uh, but I, I wouldn't be I'd be betting against him rather than on him. But I hope that he runs well in the Derby. Yeah, no doubt. I think the the more uh, encouragement that that international owners have to ship to our big races and kind of shrink the sport a little bit and make it like a, a more cohesive sport. Like I say the same thing when, when America, when we start to send more and more horses to Royal Alaska, like I wish we would send horses to the Melbourne, Melbourne Cup or some of these other big races in France. I think like any any time you get that stiff international competition, I think it's great for the game. And if we can shrink the the, the landscape a little bit, I think that that makes it a more inter interesting and entertaining product. Uh, I was just going to say my favorite uh, flop from like the Dubai horses so far in the Derby was Thunder Snow in 2017 and you guys remember that and they opened the gates and he just starts bucking and jumping around and obviously not funny if you had bet on him but come on like i, I kind of love it sometimes when horses are just like hey eh, nah i don't feel like it today because they are animals and they are in charge after all so it's nice nice yeah. it's nice that the humans get the reminder every once in a while that they don't want to go they ain't going so they ain't was, going right that was exactly. fun